All right, so I wanted to tell you all a little story about aliens, and um, so Olivia Wilde and aliens and religion and how all those things end up working together. Um, so there was a situation that happened where this is like a thirty-minute video and uh, it wasn't even recording. So. I was going through a lot of stress. Stress. Acacia strain is spelling out the word deceased. It's releasing every a letter every couple months. You know, re, re, reassembling the letters of slow decay to slowly spell out the words deceased. And then every couple months they were releasing it. So that was wearing on me. And then G59. And then there was some stuff between me and G59. And probably I ended up starting it in a way. Or I don't even know what was going on. But we wound up getting at odds and they were threatening me and anyways see that all goes see G59 and, and the Acacia strain are working together somehow and there's all these references back and forth between them about each other and G59 is a reference to my social security number and my last name and so much weird shit anyway so what so what the aliens ended up saying, you know, was there was a few things, you know. So I was ba basically, I ran into her a few years ago and I told her and then never really said anything to her. And then there was a few years later where, I, you know, I'm going through all the stress and I was looking at her and she, she ended up having a couple kids with somebody and they didn't get married. And then I said something to her nice about a year ago and I think they ended up getting married after that. Or they end up getting engaged after that or something. So I was like, well, I'm going to say something to her. Because there was a feeling that happened to me where I had a feeling I was going to meet somebody like that. And then I wasn't going to. And then it was going to be something fucked up that was going to happen to me. So when I got on, on YouTube and talked about it, then I wasn't saying, you know, I think that this is going to be a good thing. I was saying that it was something special, but it was something fucked up. Anyway, so... Or it was something special, yeah, kind of. Something that was, yeah, kind of, I guess. That's the way she came across. I don't know what the fuck. There's a woman coming into your life. That's what I knew. I didn't know what it was or what it signified or if there was anything there to or about it. I don't want to say that. You know what I mean? But I'll say that um, because I don't believe really much. You know what I mean? And especially when it comes to women and especially with you know the come a witch and the acacia strain and you know all this different stuff that they've been talking about with with women and stuff so you know, i'll be honest i take it with a grain of salt because especially i was circling that goodwill store i'd gotten i was went out of town to go to the gym and then i was like you know i need a pair of pants so i was didn't want to go to the store, I just wanted to go somewhere cheap and fast, and so that's where I went, and then on my way in, then she was walking out as I walked in, and so I was circling the store for like, I had my GPS set to Goodwill, and I ended up circling the store for about 10 or 15 minutes, so I don't know if they put her in there, or, or what exactly happened, it wouldn't surprise me, and she's a little bit older than me, so I don't think I could actually probably get... You know, if she was a little bit younger than me, then I think I could look at her and see if she, uh, and say, you know, I think you're full of shit right now about something, and, and be able to determine if there was any accuracy to it or not. And I can do that with women, you know, they don't have to be much younger than me, but with her being a little bit older than me, honestly, I've never had a firm determination in my mind of whether or not that was real or fake, you know what I mean? And... There was another thing too where I always imagined her laying on a bed somewhere and me standing next to her and then her legs would just come up and it would just kick me in the side of my head. And then she had like this little grimace on her face. It was like, it was like, <laughs> and I was, I was like, you know, so that was what, that was what I imagined. That was good. So anyways, so the so what ended up happening was I ended up sending her these messages and, and then I was like coming in a week and then after a week I was like coming another week and, 
I was like, you know what, come right now. And then and then after I was like after twenty four hours, I was like, you know what, screw it, because uh, because I don't even want to wait. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, I can't do it. And I had already settled up the whole situation in my head. I was happy with it. I was like, screw it. I'm I'm gonna forget about this. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to deal with my own feelings. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's being selfish or what, but. You know, as much as I've been through, I think it's fair, but it's probably it's probably a little selfish. But anyways, um, of a way to approach it, but you know, there are only so many ways to approach something like that. And I'll I'll be honest with you, I was really stressed out, so I don't believe that I would have probably done that. But anyways, so they so. Anyways, so after that, I was sitting there, and so I sent out. So there was something to do with you know a trillionaire class, and this is another thing I haven't really spoken about. You know that they want to have me bringing it. You know all this stuff with Slipknot and Tupac and the Acacia Strain and all these people. You know, and all they're trying to do is get me to sue the government to bring in a secret lawsuit, so then I, they can pose me like I'm in the Illuminati and. Or I'm in a gang or something, and and then they can spend the money that they've already accumulated from printing money and stuff. So I've read I've read about this type of thing, and I've seen this type of thing. Uh, uh, I've had uh, premonitions, I had feelings. There was a situation where I had a feeling where I was, you know, right around the time that they put out sensory deprivation, and I was going, you know, give me a trillion dollars, bitch, or something like this. And then they go, um, well. Uh, and then, and then all of a sudden, I felt like somebody stand up, like, "Yeah, okay, that's what I wanted you to ask about." And then I was like, "Wow, that was fucking weird." And it was so weird that I didn't even want to do anything else about it. And I read about how they do these kinds of things later on, and then, and then I tried to post a video about it, and then the video wouldn't post, and then the video actually quit working at this specific point where the screen there's a line that goes across horizontally on the top of the screen, and it's at this specific point where you touch it then then that at that point then that it was the, the screen was actually um, tampered with and I had this feeling like as soon as I posted that I had I heard these voices and, and, I, and I was looking at my phone and they were coming from the phone and it was her and her husband and they were going we're hungry. We're we're and, we're hungry. We're tired, or something like that. And I was I was like, why am I hearing that? And what does that have to do with me and what I just said? Anyways, I guess maybe they were sitting somewhere thinking I was trying to sell myself on somebody. You know, and I think that's part of the thing that. You know, the reason the aliens got involved was because they wanted people to see that really when I gave up, because I gave up and I had this feeling inside the house while I was sitting in front of my housekeeper's phone. And I think that people got this idea that I was obsessed with her. You know what I mean? And I wasn't. You know what I mean? And I don't want to go how say how far it went in my mind is to say that really nothing, like I would imagine these scenarios that her and somebody else was doing something to like get a thrill out of the fact that they thought that I was obsessed, you know what I mean? And I would just be like, that's not, you know, that's not bothering me, you know, because it just, that's not, like, I'm not like that, you know what I mean? And, 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 and that was, and it just took me a long time to get like that, you know what I mean? Where there's a woman I'm interested in, you know, and, and that's a woman I've been interested in for a long time, so, you know, that's, somebody you would think I would be obsessed with and I was just that was a thing for me not to get like that and so the but the thing the thing is is that the aliens I think saw that you know what I mean and didn't think that other people were going to see that and that has something to do with in the bible or in uh, the inside the bohemian grove with Mark Dyson they talk about you know you know Satan will splendor the intolerable and all this and when they came in, they came in hissing like snakes, okay? They, they came in and they go, because I go, you know, this vapor of smoke, and the vapor of smoke thing had to do with, I think, the song Bitter Pill by the Acacia Strain. 
in the song Bitter Pill by the Acacia Strain was where I realized that the vapor smoke was really aliens. And all this different stuff they set, showed me at that time was really aliens and wasn't God. And so they were like, whoa, okay, I guess uh, you robbed us of our faith or something. I knew they were going to accuse me of some bullshit out of it. I knew immediately. And I was like, whatever. So what they ended up doing was, um, so, so the thing is with the aliens was, God, so fuck. Anyway, so, oh, so, um, yeah, God damn it. Yeah, so so as soon as I mentioned that, then I, now I knew that you know it's, somehow that caused Trump, uh, uh, Russia to put Trump in power, and I knew how to knew I knew that that was going to happen somehow. And when I did that, and so then I waited, and then I sent out an email about it, and I was like, man, this is going to fuck everybody's morale. I was just having a lot of frantic thoughts, and then, and then. They came in. I sent out an email and felt better, and then all of a sudden they came in, and it was it was them. I know it. I actually saw a UFO not long after this, and I'll tell you all about that too. But they they came in and they started making these noises, and they go, you know, um, it was like yes, like hissing like snakes, and then they would say, and it was like, um, it was stuff like, um, you know, and they were saying, and then and then they got it, and I. They were like, their technology is greater than ours. Our technology, their technology is not greater than ours. And they said, wait till you see what we have for you, Tanner. And then they go, uh, and they go, and so they told me I had telepathics all around me. And I, I said, are y'all y'all are just telepathics or something? And I was like working with the government, somebody with telepathic ability to think to me or something. And the, and and they go, you're surrounded by telepathics, Tanner. And I go, because I figured out how some of these machines are actually listening to your head. And then they go. Wait till you see what we have in store for you, Tanner. And then they go, and I go, all right. And I go, with this woman, I go, I go, the thing is, I said, are y'all going to fuck something up between me and this woman? Because, and there was nothing there, but it was just, you know, it was, had me so fucked up in the head. I was like, y'all are going to fuck something else up right now. And that's really the only thing that's obviously matters to me at the time because nothing else obviously matters to me. So then you're going to fuck with it. And and they were like, we can. And they showed my hand clenched on something, and like psh, my fingers pulling back. And they're like, we can get this away from you, Tanner. And then they go, and then they go. Um, they showed an image of me putting my head into her chest, like for comfort. And it has to do with the Bible and this verse that I always considered the aliens were trying to tell me something about. You know, there was a you know a woman that I was supposed to be with that wasn't having to do with something else to do with all the other bullshit that they were doing to me. <clears throat> and all the women basically in my life was possibly even fake but this one and the what no it wasn't just that it was that I started thinking that later on but then but at the time it was something more like um god it's just damn there's so much to think about and I'm there's stuff that I'm just not even getting into that I, I know I'm forgetting but um So, you know, they, um, uh, but yeah, so they just, so I go, all right, uh, I go, uh, so I go, that's love. So I go, so love, is that what you're saying? And they go, yeah, Tanner, love, true love, but, uh, it was not a good idea. And I go, I go, okay. And so. Then they go, um, they go, something, you won't like it. And then, and then there was something else like, um, uh, there was a situation where he, there was a guy who was hitting, there was a situation where there was a woman that I was interested in college. She was smiling at me. She was interested in me. And then she left her boyfriend. And then there was a feeling like I was thinking about her one day at work just to get through the day. And then I, and it snapped at like a certain feeling 
And I was thinking of something about the amygdala has to do with your perception of threats and stuff. It was just perceiving some kind of threat because the guy went crazy, supposedly, or somebody did. And then the, so, and then I saw something in my mind's eye. It wasn't a perfect image or anything, but it was a representation of him. I don't want to say my mind's eye. I think I saw a little light, a slight hallucination. And then, and then there was that feeling, and so it was, I, th I thought it was him. It was him being represented. I don't know if it was him doing it or what he was going to do. But either way, then there was another guy, and I was starting to guess at all this stuff. There was somebody else who was saying, and I saw an old friend of mine, and he punched a wall, and like he wanted to do something about it. He's hit women before, so and it's it was numb too instantly. So I knew his intentions was to fuck something up. He was his intentions was to do something bad, but you know that that was all, and 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 so there was them, and they go. He wants actions and improvements, and then I heard and I heard girls say because we love you this much Tanner and there were like young women and he goes are these messages all for you and so I think what they were trying to say was that you know he, they were letting him know that there was women out there for him and you know he didn't need to do that you know it's crazy and then and then and then it wasn't long after that that she did end up showing up but see, I, I posted a, me a message where I go, you know, if you love me, just stay away from me. And she, somebody deleted it. Which is very, you know, if she was being abused, then that would be a lot of, like, real clingy behavior. And, you know, she just needed me at that point. And she maybe is just going through just some emotion, emotional problems or something. But, you know, either way, the the... Then, but then she ended up showing up, and there was a, there was a one point that they said, you know, orgies Tanner, that's all we see, orgies Tanner, that's all we see, and productivity Tanner, that's all we see. I don't know exactly what that meant, but they said that, um, and then they said um, there was at one point that I was gonna that I, that I was gonna say. Uh, you know, I've dealt with, I've been with women harder than her or something, and the only reason I said that was just because of um, a different situation that had to do with, um, that had to do with what they had put in my head, because then I was starting to get into attachment, and when you're attached, then you feel threatened, and when you feel threatened, then you lash out, and it goes all out to egocentrism and, um, and an egocentric desire to you know, furnish yourself with feelings of well-being at the cost of other people. Stuff like that I've read, you know, about this kind of stuff. and trying to keep up with it all, but, you know, that's 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 what will end up happening, but, you know, the feelings of being, if even the feeling of being threatened and uh, somebody wants to take this away from you or the fixation on something and you, know, you fixate on it and, and then your mind will start coming up with all these reasons why something's going to fuck it up or or different people want to fuck you out of that or and then you stick and you try to fight those thoughts away and then it's just going to, you just go deeper into it. And that's because of, um, just, just obsessive desire, but you know, it's easy to stay away from it if you know what it is and you can avoid it. You don't need an alien, you know, tempting you with, you know, true love, true love, little human. And, um, you know, you're the woman of your dreams and you're, you're married and all this other stuff, which actually had something to do with, you know, there was, there was a situation where, I don't want to say a situation, but I was a situation, I guess, but, uh, and, and so, but there was a lot of paranoia and, and the stress, you know what I mean? And, and, and quarantine because of coronavirus. And there. so I was sending out this email and I was like, I wouldn't be messing with her if she was married and I was and then and then I was like and then I was picturing the scenario where he was gonna say, okay then I'm gonna make you marry me tonight and, and then she was like Tanner raise your hand before they get away with it and, and I was like okay I did it and I was I sent an email I was like I did it you know what I mean 
it's just going through the motions and of what I believe was maybe happening or thought or fucked fucked in the head thinking. But, you know, the the so you know, so the the marriage thing, you know, and you know, maybe would have maybe there was truth in that. Maybe they did do that and maybe he was hitting her and maybe you know, um, they had to be baited out of, and maybe God only knows what's going on in Hollywood. You know, fucking Lil Xan, you know, have you seen videos of Lil Xan where he's talking about people are, like, taking his phone away from him, and he ain't allowed to walk, drive his own car, and, and then you see videos where they're, like, he tries to say something, like, give me that, and they take the phone away from him, uh, and there's video f and filming it, you know. I don't know what exactly is going on in Hollywood. I think that a lot of weird weird stuff probably happens to women in Hollywood. And, and you know, I don't believe that that's going on. But, you know, I believe that I believe that they can get to a woman, you know. And, and there was, but her probably not as much, you know what I mean? But, like, somebody like Lena Haiti, you know, to make her start flirting with me like that, you know, who is her parents? Her dad was a cop, you know what I mean? And then I think she probably just worked really, worked really hard and was attractive or something, you know, pretty attractive. And um, wound up, you know, just wound up being successful. So that's maybe somebody a little bit easier to control, you know. But with somebody like her, I don't think that they... I don't think they were doing anything to her. She, she maybe, maybe her boyfriend was slapping her around a little bit. I shouldn't be laughing at this. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh shit! It's not funny. I've just been up too. I've just been up too long, man. <laughs> I've just been up for way too long. I swear to God. Anyways, all I'm trying to say. Uh, just the fucked up shit that goes on out there, man. I'm just going nuts. I'm just, I'm just, it's that, it's this getting to be that late at night. Anyways, so, um, all I'm trying to say is just with, you know, everything that's been going on, um, you know, there, and, and these weren't just like voices in my head, you know what I mean? These weren't, there was a big UFO that came over the house one night and it, it was like, man, it was huge, you know what I mean, like if you held a dime in your arm, and it would be about that big, and it went across the sky, and it left a white streak behind it, and then the streak just went and from the tail end, and so it was huge, um, and, you know, one night, like I said, I was sending out emails, talking about this other girl, and, you know, date hard girls and her, or whatever, and, and I stopped to think about it, and all of a sudden I heard this voice. I'm talking like a voice, like, as if, like, this is my ear right here, and a voice goes, went, went right up to my ear, and like, it's like, lower yourself to her, Tanner. Are those better mice? Is that him flying in the air? And, I, and, and so, you know, because there was this thing where she went on a, a late night talk show, and then... I could just tell by the way she was looking into the camera that she that there was somebody out there that she was she was thinking about, you know what I mean. It wasn't somebody that she was around very often, you know. Because it's like you don't go on on camera and look back at your husband through a camera like that. You just go home and look at him like that. But but the thing is 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 that I was in jail and see they had just brought me a television and I, I feared it had something to do with her being on television at the exact same time that I got my television. I fear it had something to do with that. Anyways. So, but either ways, that was, a, that was an assertion that I made. Okay, and I may have been wrong. But this is what the aliens had to say about it. Anyways, the, and, and this is another thing probably about intolerability and, you know, the intolerability of a person and you know, how aliens and, you know, Satan will come in and try to splendor the intolerable and make you not sound crazy when you're not, you know. And, um, yeah, 
or, or when you think something's going on and, and they're looking at you and they're going, yeah, Tanner, you know what? That is actually going on. But only thing is most people wouldn't have said nothing or, you know. <laughs> and now you've kind of made yourself look stupid, which actually you're not. But you, people are going to say that. You know, so we're going to do this. You know. And so, but either way, um, you know, that was the whole thing with, you know, why are they, you know, why, why is Tanner sticking around after, you know, he said that he's getting over it, you know, because he said if he had a feeling in front of a phone, that's being obsessed, you know what I mean? But it wasn't. And that's another thing, too. When, when you work at that, I think that's the benefit, you know, when you work at not being obsessed and attached to, some, to somebody in your thinking, then you can be open and receptive to love, you know what I mean, in whatever form that it might come to you, you know what I mean, even if it comes to you in a really strange way, or a way that might somebody might say that's not, you know, that's not a good way to receive love, you know what I mean, because that means that's a bad person, you know what I mean, when you can say, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, none of us are bad, you know, and, and really, you know, people are, you know, they wind up wherever they wind up, because of things, always things that are outside of their control. You know what I mean? Even when you make a decision and you think that it was because of you, it's really it's not. It's because somebody did something to you at some point that made you think about things in a different way that made you make that decision. You know what I mean? And so when I think that's the benefit of it. You know what I mean? Um, I just think there's a lot of benefits of it. You know what I mean? You can be open to love when it, when you're not obsessive, but when you're when you're... When you are obsessive, then even when love is available to you, then you're not open to it. You know what I mean? So you can't receive it. You know what I mean? And that's the and that's been you know that's a real huge benefit of of you know knowing things. You know what I mean? And probably probably even a big huge benefit of having a problem with obsession in my life. You know what I mean? Because then I got when I found information that was able to help me with it, then I really resolved it to the point where then I would not have that problem anymore, you know? And, and that was um, to the point where, you know, then I'm not, you know, I'm not going to have the same kind of problem as a lot of other people just have, you know what I mean, uh, to deal with because they don't... You know, I'm probably rambling by now, so, but either way, but, but either way, you know, whatever. So... I just, I just don't want to underestimate the, the value of what I'm trying to say here about, you know, what can go into your head, you know. But that's probably a personal thing, you know, maybe more than what other people are experiencing. Anyway, so there were some DMT hallucinations. 